Hi, welcome to Sarah Lily Makes. My name is Sarah and I am the maker behind this channel. I am primarily a knitter. I also do some sewing, but as of right now, this channel has mostly been focused on knitting. Um, I hope to have some sewing projects soon as we gear up for fall and nearing my daughter's birthday. I like to sew for her for her birthday. So hopefully I'll have some sewing projects soon. Um, yeah, if you are new, welcome. Thank you for checking out my video and I hope you enjoy what you see. If you are returning, welcome back and thank you again for continuing to watch my videos and for continuing to support. Um, this is episode seven. Yeah, episode seven. <laughs> Kind of a little surprised to be here, but here we are. Um, I hope it is an enjoyable episode for you, and I hope you make progress on whatever it is that you're working on. I would love to know in the comments if you're so inclined to share what it is that you're working on. And yeah, let's dive right in. finished objects and whips and whatnot, I I would like to talk about what I'm wearing. I am wearing the Mia Summer Tee, which was a test knit that I did for Cheryl of Coco Amor Knitwear. I've test knitted for her a few times and I've always been pleased with her patterns and with my finished objects from her designs, from her patterns. I've always had a very pleasant positive experience knitting for her and this no less this was a very positive and very pleasant knit i knit this with sanis garn mandarin petite 100 percent cotton which is their fingering weight 100 percent cotton yarn and overall this was a lovely knit this was a very um i was pleasantly surprised with how this fabric turned out I really enjoyed it and I have been wearing it quite a bit so I thought I'd just wear it I was wearing it today so I thought I'd just keep it on as I record this video um, overall the construction it's a raglan with broken rib um, this the sleeves is completely done in broken rib and then I will stand up the sides all the way down broken rib I don't know if you can see that but the broken rib continues down the sides and then at the hem and then there is a twisted rib hemming twisted rib hem and neck and sleeves um yeah overall a really great pattern the pattern is available now and you can find it on Ravelry uh her store name is Coco Amor Knitwear and I will have it everything that I talk about I will do my best to include in the description box below um and yeah that's this this is the Mia Summer t Summer Tea and she does have a few versions of this design she has a sweater and I believe there is also like a chunky or worsted weight version and there's also a child's version but yeah it would be available on her Ravelry store and I will link everything down below I'll do my best <laughs> please leave me a comment if I am missing something and I will be more than happy to add it in all right let us jump into my recently finished objects I have a few and I have a few whips. <laughs> and I have some yarn acquisitions. Um, yeah. So I have two finished objects that were whips in my last episode. And I have a finished object that I never even talked about. And then a lot of whips. So 
I will start with this one. This was a whip in my last episode, and it was actually a very quick knit. This is the Alice Top by Petite Knit, and I love this color. I wasn't sure, actually, <clears throat> that it would work for me because it's so bright and I have a very tan skin tone. But I have been wearing it with like a white button up underneath and wearing this as like a vest. And I will insert a picture here. But yeah, I actually really, I enjoyed this. It was very simple. It's knit bottom up. So you start with a cast on, you knit up, then you separate the front and the back. You knit the front, you separate these panels here, you knit up, you bind off, then you come back and you knit up, you bind off, and then you join. So my join is not the best, like one of these shoulders is a little untidy, but it's fine. <laughs> I can't see it from the back, so it doesn't bother me. So yeah, this is the Alice Top from Petite Knit, and I knit this with Tick Lena, and I have one ball of yarn left, and I thought I'd use it all up, but I didn't. And the colorway is 3819. I don't remember the name, but that's the number, 3819 and it's Tick Lena. So I love this yarn. I have made many, many projects with this yarn. And I have a few more things that I want to make with this yarn before the summer ends. And I don't know if I'll get to it, but I'll probably not. <laughs> we'll see, we'll see, we'll see if I get to it. If I get to it, that'd be great. And if I don't, it's okay. This wasn't even a plan. And it just, I'm, I did it, so. Yeah. So this was one of my whips for my last episode. I had finished, like, up to here. I think I was up to about here when I recorded last. This was very quick because the yarn is Aran weight, bulky, I think. And it's knit on five millimeter needles, so it goes really quickly. And it's a very... I don't want to say simple construction, but if you know decreases and if you can join, if you can seam, it's it was it's a fun knit. It was fun. And yeah. No complaints about this. Actually, I don't have a complaint, but I think I do want to go back. So you, the the bottom has no finishing except the cast on edge. And it's not, it actually doesn't really bother me. I don't mind it at all, but I kind of want to go back in with some of the yarn that I have left and do an eye cord, but I don't know. I don't know if I really wanted to do that. It's, it's fine the way it is, you know? It doesn't really roll up or anything because I blocked it out and I, like held it down as I was blocking it, but I don't know, we'll see. I like it the way it is, I have no complaints, but maybe I might go back, maybe not. Knowing me, I probably won't go back. <laughs> my second finished object is was also a whip in my last episode, and I had done quite a bit of this. And I will also insert a picture here because it's very hard to capture the color of this yarn and this pattern also. But this is the Sunday Tea, which is a pattern by Petite Knit again. I don't think, I think that's, nope, nope, nope. I thought that was all I had for Petite Knit in this episode, but I don't, I have more things. <laughs> So this is the Sunday tee and I knit it a little long. I knit it all the way down to past my hips, which is, if you've been following me for a while, you know that's how I like to knit my garments. And I really love this. I knit a size medium 
and I knit this with Cislerge pure silk in a one-of-a-kind colorway. I know she still has some available on her website. I will also link it below. Um, so this yarn grows a lot. <laughs> this is the second time I'm using this yarn. This summer I knit a cumulus tea earlier this summer with this same blend, the same yarn. It's 100% pure silk. For some reason, this grew a lot. And it seems to be a little bit long for my taste. Okay, I'm gonna stand up. I will go back. Um, this is where this one here, and it, this is here. So I like my garments to fall right here, exactly right here. And this is a little bit, uh, maybe. I'll insert a picture here of me wearing it. I actually haven't taken pictures yet, but I'll try to get one and pop it in. But I am actually very pleased with this project. Um, the yarn is a delight to work with, and I have no complaints except one tiny thing that I don't know if it's just me or if anyone else has had this experience, but it pills I'm not sure if that's picking up but the fabric pills a bit as I'm knitting and not so much as I'm wearing it but when I'm knitting it's like laying on my lap and it's there obviously the friction of moving around on my lap causes it to pill like that I suppose and it's not my favorite and I'm not sure the best way to remove it. I like to shave my woolly garments as I'm wearing them to keep it clean and to keep it looking fresh. That's just me. <laughs> but I don't know that I want to use a depiller on silk. So does anyone have any thoughts, any suggestions on the best way to remove pills from silk? Um, I have another silk garment that is not the Cislerge Pure Silk. I've, I'm using the Knitting for Olive Pure Silk, which is a different method of collecting the fiber. And I'm kind of experiencing something similar not as bad as this, though. No, it's not, it's kind of, it's a little like fuzzy, but it's not like straight up like little pill balls. If that makes sense, I'll show it when I get to that project. But yeah, if you have any suggestions or thoughts on how to remove the pilling from silk, I would love to know. But otherwise, I love this garment. <laughs> I love this tea. This is my second Sunday tea and it's probably not my last because I just love this design. I have a note and I'm not gonna go back and fix it, but I did twist my stitches when I cast it, when I joined. So you do a couple rows of stock in it, then you do a purl ridge, then you do a couple rows of stock in it, and then you fold it over and you join it together for a folded over edge. And I twisted my <laughs> join, so I don't, it doesn't bother me because I'm like, I'm not seeing it as I'm wearing it anyway. But yeah, that's just something to note if you are knitting something like this. Um, it's in ribbing, it's easier to find the row because it's like a pearl bump on the other side. Like when you're joining it, if you know what I mean, it's easier to find it if it's ribbing. But if it's flat stuck in it, it's kind of hard to find the line, If I, especially on a fingering weight yarn like this. It's no matter, I'm fine. I'm fine with this. I love this project, I love this garment. It's a little long, but I'm not mad at it. I will try my best to insert a picture here at some point as I'm talking about it. But yeah, and the yarn itself is so beautiful. Like it's a neutral yellow and there's like bits of green and um, pinks and 
corals. It's just really gorgeous. I'll also have a flat lay at some point too. So yes, my Sunday tea is done. I love this project. I love this pattern. There are no short rows. So if that is something that makes or breaks a pattern for you, might be something to consider that, yeah, there are no short rows in this pattern. So just something to consider if you are interested in knitting the Sunday tea. And I think that's all I have to say about this garment. Oh, nope, one more thing. <laughs> um, so it also has a folded over hem on the bottom and on the sleeves. And I think I did a decent job of joining it. I'm actually really happy with my join. Maybe not, can't see that, but really, really happy with the join on the sleeves. And yeah, it looks so neat. I actually really love a folded hem because I just think it looks so clean and so crisp. Yeah. That's the Sunday Tea by Petite Knit. And the yarn that I used was Cis Lerger Pure Silk in a one-of-a-kind colorway. My third finished object was a garment that I wanted to knit this summer. And I'm really glad that I knit it because I love it. <laughs> This is the Peacock Tee, which is a pattern by Lynette. And it is a all over lace yoke sweater. I mean, tee. <laughs> I knit this with Saniscar and Lena in the color Siren, I believe. And I used all of six balls of yarn. I literally have that much left. And my toddler took it and said it was hers because it was a, I, I rolled it up in a ball. So she snagged that and that's hers now. Anyway, this is a gorgeous lace work tee. This is the peacock tee. Did I say that? Did I say something else? The peacock tea, yeah, peacock tea. I might have said something else. Oh, but I love this. I love this. I love this T-shirt. This knit. I have a few of Lynette's um, lace. Actually, I might have like all of them, but I have a few of her lace yoke tea patterns. And I really want to try to knit one more this summer, but I probably will not get to it. I have, I've been really wanting to knit her Dahlia, is it the Dahlia? The one with the really big leaf? That might, yes, that is the Dahlia. She has a summer version, also the same yarn composition, uh, Santa Scarlina. And I've, I got the pattern recently and I've have the yarn set aside, but I've kind of just, not that I've maxed out with my summer knitting because I still want a few more things in my wardrobe, but maybe I have kind of maxed out my summer knitting. I've knit a lot. I knit a lot this summer and I don't know. I don't know where I fall yet. Yeah. Anyway, all of that, that was a whole tangent. Did not mean to go off on a whole tangent. I apologize. The Peacock Tea. It has short rows at the back and the short rows incorporates some of the lace work on the, the right after the ribbing. And it's, I thought it was just really clever. I liked it. I liked doing it a lot. This could be a beginner friendly lace. If you've not knitted lace before, it's really a lot of just pearls and yarn overs, knit two togethers, slip slip knits. But it's just a beautiful pattern, a beautiful design. And I've also been getting a lot of wear out of this. I will, like I said, <laughs> include some pictures here, I'll try. I have some flat lay pictures, but I don't think I've taken any pictures of me wearing it yet. 
I've been really bad this year about, or this summer, about pictures of me wearing my knits, my finished objects. I've not been the best at doing that this year, and um, I don't know. I don't know if that will improve or not, but it's just been kind of... I don't know why I haven't been taking pictures. I just need to get on that. So you do the lace, you finish off the lace, it's all done, the increases are all done in the yoke. And then you do some raglan increases here, and then you split, you knit the body, you knit the sleeves, bind off, very straightforward. And I knitted, I did Italian, bind off on the hem, on all the hems, which is my general preference anyway. And I like how it looks, I like how clean it looks. Uh, oops, oh, I can't. Yeah, anyway, I like it. <laughs> and I knit this with St. Nascarne, Lena, like I said, which is their cotton linen viscose blend. If you've been watching me for a while, you will know of my love for St. Nascarne and for Sinus Garnlina. But yeah, I think I rambled way too much on this project. So I think I will finish talking about this now. <laughs> Peacock Tea by Lynette. And that was my third and final finished object. I will move on to my whips. And I have quite a few whips to share. I don't think I am going to go in any particular order, but I will start with what's on my table. Um, okay, I talked about this dress for a lot in previous episodes. My second episode, maybe I talked about this a lot. So, I this is just a mess. <laughs> there are just a lot of like pieces of yarn and like ends to weave in, and it's just a mess right now. So please bear with me. <laughs> this is the Lola dress, which. You might have guessed is a pattern by Sandis Garn. That is messy. There are just a lot of ends. Okay, I, I can't, I can't. <laughs> That's just too messy. So what I have so far is a bodice minus, um, minus some frills, which belong at the sleeves. This is a, the armhole here for right here. And I need to pick up stitches along this entire ridge here for both sides for a frill. And I need to pick up stitches for the front to do a moss edge, a moss, moss stitch edge. So I should probably just like pin that together. So. You make a back, then you make, then you pick up stitches and make two front panels here. I am doing a very poor job of this. And I still have a needle hanging on here from where I cast on. <sighs> okay, that's better. And then before you join the body, the skirt portion, you pick up two button bands here. So one of them has some buttonholes. You can see that. And then the other one is where I need to sew the buttons on. I should have done that before I filmed, but it is what it is. So this is the front. I need to pick up another moss stitch panel for the neck. I need to pick up stitches for the frills. <laughs> I keep 
forgetting that word. But I have joined and I have picked up for the skirt. So yeah, there is like a pearl ridge here for where you pick up for the frill and another pearl ridge here and on the back for where you pick up for the frill. It's, it took me a few tries of like reading through the pattern quite a few times to gain a, a good understanding of what they were asking me to do. But in the end it worked out and yeah, I just need to finish the top and then just knit like 15 more balls of this. <laughs> I really wanted to get it done this uh, before the end of August and I probably will not, but it's okay. It's fine. It's just taking time and it's knitting. Knitting is a slow hobby. It's a slow process. So I'm not mad at it. I'm actually very pleased with my progress on that dress and it was one of my top knits for this summer and it's just taking the longest and that's okay. I'm happy with my progress on it still. And I will be happy to wear it when it's done. I've seen on Ravelry there are a few finished products, finished dresses, and they are stunning. They look gorgeous on the, the wear, on the bodies of the people wearing them. And yeah, I'm really excited to actually have it done and wear it maybe next year. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> That is my first whip, and I have a few more. Uh, oh, yeah, okay. I have my second whip in this bag here, and this is another, not another, this is my first test knit for Knitonomy, and I hope I am saying that right. I'm not actually sure, but it's the username is Nitonomy on Instagram, and this is my Minto T, which is a test knit for Nitonomy. Actually, this is not a front, this is a back panel, but I have finished the back panel for this T. This is actually, I don't know if you can see. It's a beautiful cable, double cable is that what it is it's a staggered cable and I actually I have been enjoying knitting this I cast on when I got the pattern and I finished off the back panel in a few days and then I put it on hold because I wanted to cast on other things but I am not neglecting this I am actually going to pick it back up Hopefully tonight and pick up the shoulders. So, I know she has a few versions of this design and I just love it. I just really love this. Like the all of her cable, it's just so, it's so feminine to me and it's just my style, <laughs> my personal style anyway. And I love it. I really, I'm enjoying knitting this. It's, it's an intuitive cable repeat it was intuitive enough for me to knit without having to look at the pattern. In the test knit pattern, she did not provide charts, but I know a few testers requested charts, so I'm not sure if she will include it in the final release pattern or not, but as a visual person, I was fine without needing a chart, and I like charts personally too. I was fine just reading the text, and that was enough for me to knit this without having a chart. It was just a lot more paper, a lot more words, a lot more paper, but it's fine. I liked it. Um, I was happy with the way the pattern is written. And I am knitting this with Knitting for Olive. Um, merino in Powder Rose, Puder Rosa, or Soft Rose, actually. This is some leftover stash yarn that I had, and I had just enough to make this. So I was really pleased because 
I've been wanting to knit this up. I wanted, I've been wanting to finish this and I was just really happy that I had enough to knit this with this. I made a Dahlia dress with like three skeins and a Dahlia just for my daughter. Sorry, not for me, for my daughter. The Lay Knit Dahlia, yes, that's what I said. Yeah, Dahlia. <laughs> I knit the Dahlia dress with some of this yarn and I had some skeins left over, some balls left over and I'm really happy that I could use it up. And this be a stash project, a stash busting project, but yeah. This is the back panel. So I just need to pick up sleeves here, here, then join and then join at the armpits and then knit down. I say just, but it'll take me a little while to get finish on this. This isn't due until September, so I have some time. And I am enjoying working on this project. Yeah, this is knit on... So it's knit with a single strand of fingering weight yarn, but on 3.75 millimeter needles for my size. I think some of the other sizes are 3.5 millimeters. But I'm enjoying the fabric that this is creating. It's like, I mean, it's not opaque by any means, even like with like the ribbing. Like it's, I love it. I love this color. And I think it really, once I get washing and blocking, it will really bloom and I'm excited. <laughs> but yeah, this is Deminto Tea, which is a test knit for Knitonomy. And I hope I'm saying that correctly. I apologize if I'm not. That is my second whip. I have a third whip. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I did this back. Okay. So I have still been wanting to continue summer knitting, like I said, even though I feel like I've reached my limit. So I kind of started fall knitting. Okay, I want to make a fall inspiration slash fall plans video at some point, but I'm not quite ready to do that yet because I am eagerly awaiting the release of Stannis Garn's newest magazines. And they have a volume one being released next week and then a second volume in like three, two to three weeks later, maybe even a month. But I'm waiting for that before making a plans slash inspiration video because I know 90% of my plans will be from that. I have a few things already like churning in the back of my mind, but 90% of my fall plans will probably be from St. Nascarin the newest booklets because I've seen some of the designs already and they look good <laughs> I'm excited. So I started fall knitting. This isn't for me. This is for my toddler. And this is the Guernsey Genser. The children's version. So. I wanted it the Guernsey Genser for myself. I'll put a picture of what it looks like here. Or I'll just share the magazine. So. This pattern here, the Guernsey Genser, which has been all over social media or Instagram at least. Oh, that's hard to see. Hmm, that's very blown out. Yeah, it is a structured, textured, lattice, crisscross pattern. And I am knitting this with the recommended yarn, Double Sunday, held with tin silk mohair. And I think it's the same color, actually, as the sample. Well, at least the Double Sunday is. The Double Sunday... Okay, this, the tinsel mohair is leftover that I had from a Moby sweater I made earlier this year. And I purchased this yarn like 
a year ago maybe to make something for myself. I never got around to doing that. So I was like, okay, I can make the Guernsey Ganser with this for my daughter. And I'm actually very pleased with how this is turning out so far. I just started this like two days ago and I haven't very, I haven't made very much progress. I just, I'm like halfway through the cabling, the lattice, lattice work, but I am loving it. I love knitting cables, Lamento T. <laughs> I knit four cable sweaters over the past year and I have more that I want to make, so. I started on this because I want to make the Guernsey Ganser for myself, like I said, and I just kind of wanted to dip my toes, I guess, into it with this for my daughter. And it's already knitting up pretty quickly. I mean, it's, I don't have much, but I actually also haven't knitted a whole lot on it yet. I haven't spent a whole lot of time knitting on this yet, so. I am eager to finish this because I want to knit mine, which is one of my fall plans, which I'm not getting to yet. Once the pattern booklets are released, I can get to making my fall plans video. And I have three more whips. So my daughter turns four in three weeks and I wanted to cast on a birthday sweater for her. I'm planning on sewing a dress or skirt or something for her too. But I really wanted to, I've been making sweaters for my kids' birthdays for the past like four years since I got back into knitting. I started a Monday sweater. <laughs> and is that hard to see? Yeah. The yarn that I'm using is some stash yarn that I had, I got the moment she actually released this color, but it's Cis Leger. Oh my gosh, this is so hard to see. In the colorway Tivoli. But I have had this yarn for a while to make a Monday sweater for my daughter and one for myself. At some point because I like matching with her she likes matching it's cute I have barely made any progress I have just done like six raglan increases maybe but it's a really just lovely pattern it's simple it's a great blank canvas for a gorgeous yarn like this and Hence the reason why I want to make myself one, because I feel like it will really showcase this gorgeous speckling. And I feel like this color is just perfect for a birthday. It's like sprinkles, but it's really cute. I was curious as to what the word Tivoli means, so I looked it up. And it means like amusement park or something in Danish. And I think that's very fitting. I feel like that's just fun, cute. Amusement park, childhood, it's just, it's just fun. Yeah, so not much progress on that. Not much, prog not, not much progress on most of my whips because they're just recent cast-ons. But I'm hoping I can finish this within the week because her birthday is in three weeks. I want to finish that and I want to finish the Guernsey Genser as well. Hopefully I can gift that to her. Not that she really cares for a gift knit sweater, but anyway. My second to last whip was an acquisition in my last video. And it is the camisole number no. nine by My Favorite Things Knitwear. And I love this. I love this. I love this is, oh, this is good. This is good. I like this color a lot too. This is, um, this is Knitting for Olive, pure silk in raspberry pink. 
and it's a really gorgeous pink. Okay, so this is the camisole number nine by My Favorite Things Knitwear. And I am on, I just finished my second ball. Um, what I did was I finished the first ball of yarn. Then I picked up for the neck edge. I didn't seam it down. I didn't sew it down. And then I started on the second ball and then I finished off the second ball here. And then I went back and I seamed down the neck edge. So I think it's a really beautiful knit. I think it's a beautiful construction. I don't think I did the seaming very well. I kind of twisted. I picked up the correct number of stitches and maybe even a little less because I prefer a slightly snugger neck, neck line. And I just don't know that I seamed it down very well. Like, might be hard to see, but um, it's kind of twisted like right here, like this area here is a little twisted. And I don't know that it really like bothers me too much. Like looking at it flat, I can see that it's twisted, but I wonder if I wear it like with my Sunday tea, will it bother me? I think I'm just going to wear it, finish it, wear it a bit and see if it bothers me and if it doesn't bother me, then I'll just leave it as it is. If it does bother me, then I will rip it out and fix it. But I think it's very clever the way that this pattern is written. I'm not going to share details because it's a paid for pattern, but you pick up the stitches for the neckline and then you sew it down a certain way, thus giving it this, the knit ridge edge along the entire neckline. I haven't picked up the sleeve. I'm not sleeve, actually the armhole yet. And I want to do that before I pick up the body. The thing is, because I feel like I did it kind of sloppy, the neck, I don't know if I want to do it the same way for the arms or not. And I don't know if it will look odd because the neck is done with the knit ridge and then the sleeves might be done with like without it. I feel like it'll be fine, but I liked doing it. It was a little bit fiddly, a little bit like finicky. I feel like the pattern could include the amount of yarn you need to sew the edge down. I my tail was just way too long and it was just get it kept getting tangled up. So that kind of also could be why I just have it a little bit sloppy there. No, I think I just did it wrong. <laughs> I just did it sloppy. It's no, no fault of the pattern. But I feel like that information could be helpful. It's not included. I did like three times the amount, three times the circumference, I think. And that was just too much. Maybe two times the circumference might be a good amount of length but yeah if you've knit this pattern did you have trouble with the neck like I did not that I really had trouble but just like with it being twisted I think um, I could have done it better but yeah maybe it will block out but maybe it won't <laughs> I don't think it will <laughs> yeah but anyway I still like how it looks. I feel like it's still a really gorgeous design. Like this is just, I f it's very clever. This pattern is very clever, I think. Like, yeah. It's a basic tank top, but I think how the neck is constructed is very cleverly done. And kudos to my favorite things knitwear. Um, yeah, I might end up doing it over, but I don't know. Yeah, so I think this armhole depth is good for me. Like, 
it's right where like there's like space here um i think it might might be a little deep so i might pick up less stitches and see how that works um but overall yeah i really like this pattern i said previously that i didn't care for top down camisoles and tanks etc and i still stand by that i feel like a bottom-up camisole where you are not fiddling with four separate i didn't have a problem with this pattern i just I think I generally prefer a bottom-up camisole over a top-down camisole. That's my personal preference and still really liked this pattern and I still enjoyed knitting this. My daughter, my teenage daughter, wants me to knit one for her. I like it. I will make her one at some point. And oh yeah, so I did say something about the pilling on my silk it will be very hard to see but like it's fuzzy it's kind of fuzzy where it's been laying on my lap as i'm knitting it not to the point where it's like pilling like the sisler j pure silk but i'm struggling with like what to do about that i don't think washing it out washing and blocking would really help the pilling because washing and blocking didn't help the pure silk and it's not that's not going to help pilling anyway so what am i saying my last whip is a project i mean a pattern that was just released by petite knit <laughs> and i have very little to share but i did cast on the ava cardigan the construction is very similar that well the shoulder construction is very similar to the poppy tee and the Leon sweater and I enjoy that construction so it's that's all I have I have like I'm like halfway through the back piece uh, yeah about halfway through the back piece that's all so far I'm excited to knit this up that's definitely a fall project and I will work slowly on that because we are still having very warm temperatures here and that is it for my whips and I have a few acquisitions to share and I will jump right into that because I am running out of time this <laughs> which is this um, the Pier Gint the Petite Knit Pier Gint from Sandus Garn I got a few colors of these because I was eager to start fall knitting. <laughs> so this is the one that she knitted her sample in. This is the color 5591. And then I got um, the gray 1021. And then I got a beige <laughs> 2512 Oops. <clears throat> I got one more color actually the lilac 5012 so yes I love Pier Gint and this cardigan would be my fifth garment that I've knitted with Pier Gint because I love the yarn so much. Now, the first time I knitted with Pier Gint, I found it very rustic and scratchy. And I don't find it, I don't find that I feel that way about the yarn anymore. I don't find it, I'm sensitive to the yarn at all anymore. So I have knitted a few things with the yarn and I love it. And I'm excited to use that up this fall and winter and I have a few other bits of yarn to share that was a pre-order that came in right after my last episode and it's the Woolberry Caboose collection and 
I have these. So, I got sweaters quantity of Chick Cheeks. I love the names of <laughs> I love the names of this yarn. Oh my gosh. And it's very chick color. It's just so cute. So, this is something for late fall, early winter. And then, oh yes, I'm sorry. I got this on Berry Natural, which is a non-superwash yarn. And then, Chick Cheeks, and then Berry Suri, which is a Suri, um, Suri Alpaca silk yarn. And I love the yardage on this Suri Alpaca because compared to a few other indie dyers, this is a lot more yarn you get compared to a few other yarn dyers. And I was worried that I would run out of yarn, but I actually have enough. This has 437 yards per 50 grams. And this is enough. Well, a couple of these will be enough for a sweater with this. My second Wilbury Caboose Collection yarn is Pig Patootie. And this is a gorgeous neutral with like pinks and browns. And I got this on Berry Merino, which is a 100% Super Rush yarn, Super Rush Merino yarn. And then my last one I got was Corgi Caboose. <laughs> So this is a brown neutral with dark speckles, and it's so lovely. And this, I got this in Berry Cozy Sock, which is a 80% Superwash Merino yarn and 20% nylon yarn. So these are perfect fall colors, and I love them, and I'm excited to knit with them. And yeah. I am out of time. Um, this was a little bit rambly and long and generally just all over the place. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for watching. And I hope you made progress on whatever it is that you were working on. Um, if you're interested in fall plans videos, that will be later. Um, let me know if you'd be interested in that. If you'd be interested in a fall inspiration slash planning video. I have a lot of inspiration and a lot of plans for fall. But I am waiting for that those magazines. And then I can talk about my inspiration and plans. My inspiration is generally Santa Scarn if I'm being perfectly honest. Yeah. Anyway, that's it for this video. Thank you for watching all the way through if you did. <laughs> and yeah, I would love to know what you were working on and I hope you made progress on it and I hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you next time. Thanks for watching. Bye.